You seem to know all the right buttons to push with this film. Congratulations on this. I mean, as your directorial debut, very, very well done. Talk a little bit about what got you wanting to do this movie, you know, as kind of like your first project. Well, um, I mean, you know, I, I think wanting to direct um, is its own story, I guess. Mm -hmm. This particular piece, um, you know, it's based on a novel written by Elena Ferrante, who's an Italian author. Um, and uh, I started reading other books of hers first and they were so, I dropped one of them when I was reading it actually, because it was so bold in how truthful it is. I think we've made an agreement as, um, as a culture not to talk about all sorts of aspects of our experience, I think, especially as women. And, mm -hmm. um, and Ferrante broke the agreement and she went into the, the edges of our experience, the dark, painful stuff, and also the ecstatic stuff. And it had a really strong impact on me. It was invigorating and um, felt dangerous. And uh, I thought, well, what if instead of being alone in my room with a book, having this kind of electric feeling, what if I could put it up on a screen and you could actually hear and see these truthful things said out loud um, and in a communal space, like a movie theater, you know, sitting next to maybe your wife or your mother or your husband or your daughter. I thought that would be a really radical thing to, to try to do. Yeah, I know. And you're, you're absolutely right because yeah, we've all been conditioned to think that our lives are supposed to be this almost like cookie cutter thing of, you know, just go off to work, have your family, go home, grow old together. And, you know, like that, there aren't really supposed to be any bumps in the road, but for the most part, there are usually more bumps than there are, you know, the smooth pavement that we all have to go along. Mm -hmm. And I just have to say in regards to people in the movie, Olivia Coleman, I just watching this, it's almost like you couldn't imagine anyone else playing this role except for her. Mm -hmm. Right. I agree. I mean, well, of course that's because she's so brilliant and she created a it's like you couldn't imagine anyone else being your wife or, you know, like, like right. uh, be, this person couldn't be anyone but them. Like she created a real person uh, that we can relate to and that we recognize as, as honest, you know, and that's not easy. No, no, that that's for sure. And like you said, it's this whole different ride where we all just go along and I, I, you know, we all, I just got, you know, absorbed in it as well. And I think it's also deals with like having a, being raised by a single mother, you know, that way you see different things from different angles, but Absolutely. it, it yeah, was, my husband always says, um, you know, because of course, yes, in a lot of ways, this is, it's, a, it's, it's, I think new in that it's, it is from a real feminine perspective and it's focusing on a feminine, on a, female on a few females, but Peter always says, um, everyone has a mother, you know? So even if you aren't a mother, you, everyone has one. And yes. as much as you might fantasize and wish that your mother wanted nothing more than to take care of you, I am willing to bet that she probably also had a whole lot of other things going on in her mind. I, mean, I don't know any parent that doesn't have um, a whole massive, huge, colorful spectrum of feelings about about parenting. Mm -hmm. No, that's for sure. Maggie, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for this movie. And you're right. I can't imagine anybody being my wife other than my wife. So thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hello. How are you both? Hi, good. How are Hi. you? Good. Good to see you. And you. And of course, the nice smiles. I was going to say, Olivia, uh, <laughs> your character, she didn't have a big smile much, but she had a lot of other stuff going on, though, didn't she? Yes, she was a bit, bit too busy to be very grinny, maybe. That's terrible. <laughs> busy to be too grinny. Busy, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm, no. I'm sorry for her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it, it's always a thing, you know, you're off on a vacation. You think, hey, it's going to be the, you know, the fun thing. I mean, you got Dakota and her family. They're over there having a great time. And all of a sudden, <laughs> just memories from the past and what is it about things you know that have happened to us in the past that we'll still hold on to even 20 some years later yeah well yes we know that to be true we know that you know things that happen 
when you're very young, mm -hmm. if not dealt with, can cause a lot of damage. And I think there's mm -hmm. something about this. Uh, she gives herself, by the end of the film, uh, she forgives herself, I think. And uh, and it's, it, it's, I think for anyone watching, um, some girlfriends of mine came to watch the premiere in London and they said, they sort of went, thank you for, mm. it was so honest. Yeah. And it turns out it's really normal to be a bit shit at this sometimes. And that's fine. And, mm. uh, you know, you're not alone. And I think, I think, yes, uh, dealing with something that's happened in the past, sometimes you need to go, it's okay. Uh, I can, I can learn from it and I can be better and I can help other people and I can forgive myself. And I think that's what happens for Leda. Right. And, and I was going to say, Dakota, just with going along with what she said, again, like with your family, we see them on the beach. I mean, how perfect on this great vacation. You've got the kids, husband, the whole family. But it as well wasn't exactly looking like what it really was. And then that caused some problems in your relationship. Yeah. I, well, I think, you know, you never want to be on vacation and have that family there. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you're there and there's nobody on the beach. And then suddenly it's just this like humongous, loud, obnoxious family. Oh my God, nightmare. Yeah, that would ruin a holiday. Nightmare. <laughs> that would ruin a holiday. And they're just everywhere you go. Uh huh. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it is very true because like we've said, we've all grown up watching these movies and other things, you know, with the happy families. And you think, oh, that's how it's supposed to be. The reality is it's more so like what we saw here where, you know, just so many different things are going on, you know, with somebody's family. Yeah. And just yeah. even have to also ask you. that everyone has an inner landscape. Everyone is going through something. And, and it's so, uh, it's hard, you know, with movies when, you keep seeing things that are so unrealistic and the, it's like this striving to be this perfect mother or woman or wife or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and it's just not true. And the reality is that being flawed is being perfect. That is what's real. So that this movie is, is more about like the real experience of, of women and motherhood and that it's okay to, to be complicated about it. Couldn't end this better. No. That was good, perfect, wasn't it? Perfect. It was. I mean, yeah. per perfectly yeah. said, because that <laughs> that was that's life, you know, seriously. Yeah. Ladies, thank you both very, very much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Lovely and, to meet you. And um, this guy's yeah, obviously a very whole interesting ride with this movie. Uh, because kind of like both of your characters are almost when I say almost like the same, but at different times in people's lives. But just starting out with yours, Peter, I mean, you know, with Lita, uh, she meets him when she's younger. Uh, he's, you know, speaking in colleges and all like that. She's married, but he was just kind of like what she needed to break away from all the trouble going on in her life, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, I think the role in the movie that I'm most similar to in terms of function is with the hitchhikers, you know, oh, yeah. um, with all the... And, you know, just this idea that there is life elsewhere, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, as a parent, it, you get, it, everything gets to be so small in this little world of you and your children. And then we're just these heads that pop <laughs> into the room and go, there's a whole other incredible thing out there, by the way, you don't have to do it, but it's out there. And um, yeah, we kind of light the fire or let's uh, she lights her own fire we we just offer a little kindling maybe mm -hmm. there you go and and paul even like your guy he, here he is modern time uh mm -hmm. runs into uh dakota and her family and it's a, kind of almost a similar situation but now in modern time where it's like she's married she's happy but not really but your guy mm -hmm. is there to kind of like help her you know find herself yeah and i think it's a like I feel like with uh, Leda's response to Peter's character is different to, I think, Dakota's with mine in that it's there's um, Will's a little bit more is a little needier, I think, um, which I think is true. I, I like it. And as he can be discarded by Dakota's character, which I think is interesting. And I think with my relationship to Olivia's, it's just that kind of like complexity that happens when you actually have a conversation with somebody 
you know, when you're actually, when you meet somebody and they're new in your world and you're figuring out what the dynamic is. And I feel like that's essentially what the study of that character to my mind is. It's what's it like to meet somebody and figure out what they feel and think about you. It's uh, yeah, it's interesting. It certainly is. And actually even going along with what you both said, and Peter, when you had touched on it, you know, about families where we're used to looking at, you know, certain families, I'll just say on American TV, where everything is just, you know, so perfect. So great. The parents tell the kids what to do and the kids do it and everybody's just happy. Where the reality is, yeah, we've kind of sometimes got to look a little bit beyond, uh, you know, what we see sometimes on TV and different things like that, because you're right, our, our world is completely different for adults and kids, and we need to experience more for sure. Yeah, and I think um, pretending that we don't have these feelings, you know, obviously doesn't make them go away. So, you know, certainly with the generation where I grew up, we were all sort of instructed to create the, help create the illusion that everything was wonderful. I remember like, you know, showing up at like some Thanksgiving dinner with a bunch of my relatives and we're a really good family. <laughs> you know, show up with your parents. We're really lovely. I love my parents. It's amazing. Everything's going fantastic. You know, um, you know, just that that bullshit really doesn't doesn't feed your spirit. Doesn't feed your desire. You're not going to create art with with the the emergency break on like that. No, no, that's for sure. And, and, and like you said, it's like, yeah, you look at everybody else who's saying all that, hey, we're the best. And you're going, where are you guys living? But then also just have to ask, of course, this is Maggie's first time directing and also writing. Paul, talk a little bit about working with her. Yeah, was, she's incredible. Like, I think that for an actor to have somebody who's, or from my personal standpoint, it's like somebody I've watched for years and been incredibly impressed by from like, day one to suddenly be on the other side of the camera watching your performance it feels like you're kind of held up you know you're, you're not you're never going to fall off the edge of the cliff but nor does she kind of like pull you back from she's like if you're going to fall over the cliff it's going to still be interesting you know like she she's watching you and not trying to like force an idea upon it that she's probably considered through her like deep understanding of the text she just kind of lets you Go, like Peter said it in, in an earlier interview, and I think it's so right. She just uh, she guides you slightly away from the furniture and lets you run away with it. And I think that was a it's a really enjoyable way to work. And I was going to say, Peter, this also has to be, you know, a fun and great experience, of course, family wise, having Maggie do this and with such a great, you know, movie and product, you know, that came out. Well, I reckon it could have gone either way. You know, it could have been really wonderful or it could have been like, you know, the end. Um, <laughs> no, it was, uh, I really trust her, which is to say, you know, when I would be acting in it and she would say, we got it, we have it now. Um, I really believed her, you know, I would say most directors, when they tell me they have it, I think you have no idea, <laughs> like, because you don't know me. How would you know what I'm capable of or what other things might come out of me? You spent very little time with me and really looking at me and considering me. And I felt like not just with me because I'm her lover, but with everyone in the cast, Maggie really, really made an effort to help that person, person toward their potential of what they could be. Um, after I did one of my first takes, you know, this big lecture scene, which seemed like a big scene in my head because it was like the first scene I was doing and I'm giving a lecture. I'm not talking to someone else. I did it and she was like, that's great, let's do it again. And then that's great, let's do it again. That's great, take your elbow off the lectern. I was like, I can't take my elbow off the lectern. <laughs> I need the lectern. You know, like when you're giving one of those speeches, you're just like, this is the only thing between me and hell. I have to hold on to this. I can't leave this. You I know? literally got shivers of the back of my head there. I was like, I know, you know like, you know, so what do I do with my hands? I have a... <laughs> God, so gosh. she's the one that made me step away. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time. Great seeing you both. And take care and see you again soon. Yeah, be well. Thank you.